everyone. Welcome to Nottingham Hockey Centre. It's Premier Division hockey action and it's Beeston versus Hampstead and Westminster. Looks like a very, very interesting game in prospect. We've got two teams of varying and trusting fortunes during the second phase of the season. We'll give you more detail on that in a few moments time. Having a quick look at the position and the men's competition first because there are some other games going on today. We'll just briefly look at these. You can see uh, Beeston in 8th place following their victory last week. Breathing space between them and Durham University. And elsewhere in the men's competition today, Surbiton play Hampstead and Westminster. All the other fixtures are tomorrow. East Grinstead, Holcombe, Wimbledon, Old Georgians. And also in the bottom five split, Durham University versus Brooklands and Beeston versus University of Exeter. That game with BTV coverage. I'm Andy Day. Sitting beside me for the very first time in the chapel is Jake Reed. How are you doing, Jake? I'm doing really well, Andy. It's a pleasure to be here. What do you make of the game that you're going to see today? I think it's going to be uh, an interesting game, absolutely, um, based on how the girls performed last time. Uh, from what I heard, it was a very close game. So, uh, yeah, I definitely think we're in for a, a competitive match today. Let's set the scene, shall we? Uh, the women's fixtures today in the top six. It's Surbiton versus East Grinstead, Beeston versus Hampton and Westminster, of course, which we're covering for you. And Clifton Robinsons versus Wimbledon in the bottom five. Swansea, Loughborough Students, Holcombe versus Buckingham. No easy games left in the division with so much still at stake. This is the way the table looks. Topping the table, Surbiton on 31, East Grosset at a point back on 30. Today's visitors on 28, Wimbledon on 26, Beeston on 17, Clifton Robinsons with 13. Great result for the Bees last time out, away win at Clifton Robinsons. Does that give the team confidence going into a fixture like this today? Absolutely, I think it has to. Uh, if you look at their previous two games with a draw and a win, uh, they're on good form and the girls are playing well. I know they're feeling good in training, so... Um, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you've got to go in today with a bit of confidence. Indeed. Looking at the form guide for Hampstead and Westminster, I was looking at the results for the season. Hampstead and Westminster looking for their first win since a 3-0 victory against Swansea on November the 13th. That does seem a long time ago, and of course there was the winter break in the middle of that as well, but uh, I'm sure it's something that Hampstead and Westminster want to put right as soon as they can, so the impetus uh, could be with them. That's their focus today. So the team's about to make their way onto the field of play. So uh, we'll have the walkouts in a moment. We'll also introduce you to the teams in a few moments as well, if we can pop the uh, team information on the screen. And also introduce you to the uh, match umpires as well in a few moments' time. So the team's making their way out onto the field of play. Stephen Cox and Annette Harvey are your umpires. Beeston, match day 16. There's a few changes in there from uh, what we've seen recently. There's quite a few uh, injuries which are being carried. A um, couple of players there who catch your eye in that uh, setup. Absolutely, yeah. I think um, obviously at the back with uh, Hannah Greaves, she's been really strong this season. Um, obviously, it's great to see uh, Paige Gillett kind of coming back into the team from her injury. Obviously, she's been pivotal in the squad. Uh, and again with Imogen O'Neill uh, playing again uh, for the Bees in the first team as a, a regular in the second team. It's great to see her getting more exposure in that first team really. Also we are hearing today that uh, Sophie Robinson will play a deeper role in the field which is something we're, we're looking forward to. She's one of the two joint top scorers, Sophie Robinson, Lucy Millington, also is uh, out at the moment. So also looking at today's visitors. A wealth of experience in that uh, lineup as well. Also, uh, international experience. Holly Hunt was playing uh, this time last weekend, or close to this time last yes. weekend, in Argentina for England. So, uh, it's uh, it's fair to say that Hampstead and Westminster have put all their available uh, players into this one. They they know that this will be a tough test, and really will be going for it. On paper they're a, they're a brilliant side um, but again it's, it's going to come down to who gets the job done today so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So the scene is set, you're right up to date with the match day 16s, you're up to date with the positions in the table and also Anne Hair sign is your match official and 
we are almost set to go. Conditions way different to uh, six days ago here at almost exactly the same time. It is sunny and bright. You can see there's a little breeze in the air. Conditions good for fast, free-flowing hockey. Beeston in black, black and yellow. Playing from left to right as the camera looks. Attacking the boulevard end. And Hampstead and Westminster in the white and blue. Playing from right to left. Attacking the car park in this first half. Beeston looking to progress down the field early on. And already there's been a turnover. Hampstead and Westminster. It's a very scrappy start with possession on halfway. It's really good to see, though, that um, the girls clearly want to go for this. Um, uh, they're applying pressure straight away and really kind of want to put the foot on the game and get that hold early. Indeed, we noticed that a feature of their game plan was to hold the ball, make sure that the uh, possession of the ball was paramount uh, two weeks ago when we saw them most recently. And uh, that slowed the pace of the game down, but also showed that they were in control of it, which is... Uh, Absolutely. I think it's... Um, you want to get control of the game really early, string some passes together. It, it helps to build your confidence. It helps to kind of just settle into the game. Uh, and I think at Beeston, a, a very good team at doing that. It's now the visitors' time to maintain possession just into the Beeston half. Already running into traffic. I think the whistle's blown. Please get the free hit from there. So it's a scrappy start. I think both sides feeling each other out, it's fair to say, at the moment. I think both teams would like to get a little bit more control, uh, build up, as we say, a bit more possession, just to, just to kind of control the game a little bit more, string something together. Now, that was what looked good, but it was a risky moment that almost paid off. Sometimes if you are playing deep and holding possession, you've got to make the risk to get the ball further up the field. First time pass. Nice idea, didn't quite come off and almost at the risk of uh, giving the ball away high up the field. Absolutely, and I think um, early on to do that in a game, um, it's a little bit risky. You'd, you'd probably think you want to do that a little bit later on into the game when you've strung a few passes together. Things starting to take shape down the beast and left at the moment. Mopped up by the Hampstead and Westminster defence. Rolling out of play. Really good pressure there from, I think it's Alice Huddleston, number seven. Just clearly really wanted to apply pressure to the ball carrier and get their head down early. Going in from the side, building a bit of a bridgehead. Things are were progressing and then after a bit of a fashion, possession yeah. turned over. A little bit cheap there, a little bit. All the action really taking a place over the far side of the field at the moment into the sunshine. So our player recognition isn't as good as it would usually be. Uh, attempted aerial ball picked out of the air by the Hampson and Westminster defence. You can see Alice Huddleston making a nuisance of herself high up the field. And it looks like she's won possession. She's been waved on by the umpire. She checks back. It's been nudged away. And the whistle blows in favour of the visitors. That was nice from Huddleston, really closing down quickly and making a, a proper nuisance of herself and first presentable entry into the uh, into the either circle. Today. Yeah, really good. I think that's what Alice does really well. Uh, if you give her that opportunity uh, and you just show her too much of the ball, she is there and she does get rewards from that. Another free hit for the visitors, this time on their left-hand side. Quick ball through the middle. Beeston hunting in packs and winning the ball back. Again, building down the far side of the field. Turn over again. It is all very congested. It looks like there's more than 22 players out there at the moment. I'd love to see them kind of just open the pitch up a little bit, utilise those wider channels just to move the opposition and simply create those pockets to play through. you spend an awful lot of time watching hockey and coaching as well uh, and this is the, where the benefit of your experience comes from would you have uh, how would you have attacked uh, Hampstead and Westminster today would you have held back or would you would, uh, would maybe a more adventurous approach pay off do you think I think you have to believe in the squad that we have um, I think the girls have been training incredibly well 
uh, had some really good results and some really close fought matches. So, I mean, I definitely come to this game feeling good and I would go uh, at them straight away. So I think you can see from moment one uh, to chuck the ball high into the Hampstead end just shows what kind of game we're in for, really, that the girls do want to go for this and believe that there are rewards to be gained. This is BTV, five minutes gone. Eastern nil, Hampstead and Westminster nil. It's been a bit of a fractured start to the game. No side really getting their teeth into possession so far. Again, we've seen high from Huddleston looking to win the ball back on the 23. Just trying to get another stick into there again. And possession given away by the umpire's whistle. It's great that they're trying to get the ball into, obviously, the Hampstead defensive end, but it's it's just another throwaway ball. We need to, need to really build possession and start to play through channels. A lot of space here on the Hampstead and Westminster left-hand side, just taken nicely by Turner. I'll keep saying it because it's true. It does look extremely congested out there. Absolutely. So is that the... Uh, part of the defensive strategy from both sides to swamp the player in possession. It seems so at the moment. Every time you kind of see any of the players on the ball, there's, there's definitely numbers around them. Attempted layoff. And that's a beast and free hit taken quickly into the circle. Is this a shot towards goal? It's been saved brilliantly. And that's really, really good work in the defensive ranks from Hampstead and Westminster. Miriam Pritchard doing very well to keep that out. I'd like to see that again. Time is off. And uh, goalkeeper is down off camera. Let's have a look at this. Talk us through this. It's that injection of speed. As soon as this foul is blown straight away, Alice straight on the ball, straight to it. Quick elimination skill to get that shot off. And again, we're just first on the rebound with, I believe it's Nadia. Um, really, really good reactions and really unfortunate. Goalkeeper Pritchard is back up. So... Uh, Play will restart. Umpire is just checking that all is well. It was a good save. Needed to be there. Right place, right time. There was a bit more goal to aim at, though. Uh, so swings and roundabouts. Good place. Good to get the shot away. Good goalkeeping. Maybe a different outcome could have occurred. Absolutely. I think that's the difference between uh, the top three or four teams, really. It's when you get those chances, the teams that are looking for those small margins, those bottom corners, those are the teams that are going to reap those rewards really and come away on top. Promising for Beeston to have the first shot on target in the game. Still early days though. Anything can happen in hockey and we've seen it all on BTV over the course of the last couple of years. It's looked very end to end at the moment. Uh, I'd say both teams are, have had opportunities. Uh, I haven't really seen any major goal scoring opportunities from Hampstead yet. But again, um, it's very early in the game. But this definitely a fair split on possession, should we say. If you've been watching the international hockey recently, you'll be more familiar with four quarters of 15 minutes. If this is the first time you've seen BTV, Premier Division hockey in England is four quarters of 17 and a half minutes. So if you're wondering why the players will be carrying on beyond 15 minutes, it's that. It's 17 and a half minutes quarters. Now, nice movement quickly from Hampson and Westminster, but slightly too quick for possession given away from both sides in the sunshine in the middle of the field. Again, it's just a little bit too risky for me. We're trying to play through bodies, both teams, um, and it's just causing that unnecessary turnover. Hampstead of Westminster making the most of the space, pushing it out to the left-hand side. There's a player on the baseline has been turned in, looking for a foot that didn't come there. There's a stick gone flying in the middle of that as well. Beeston trying to bring it out as a swing and there's a whistle gone. I think uh, Nadia and Alok will come and uh, get the benefit of the whistle there. I'm not sure whose player that was that the stick went flying but you can sh certainly see that both teams are, are keen for this one. Yeah absolutely and I think it was a really crucial step by Page uh, just inside the D to kind of ensure that ball didn't end up going across for an easy tap in. Um, it's a really good reading of the game. Attempted ball straight through the middle has been intercepted. Real battle for possession. And already, yes, we are only nearly nine minutes into the game. It's uh, nine completed minutes into the game. It's a real 
battle between the two sides. This one may not be full of goals, but I've got a. It's two very committed teams. Yeah, and, and, and again, we just that ball. We're trying to go forward. We're trying to connect with that next layer, but just a little bit too far to reach there. Ends in the sideline, and again, possession change hands. Just for the, for the benefit of those uh, watching, Jake uh, is, is using Wii all the time because he's currently wearing the uh, Beeston Club shop. Um, so uh, that's why he's using the word Wii for, uh, for Beeston. Home side moving it around neatly across the back, but it breaks down high up the field of play and into the circle for the first time and dealt with sharply in defence nothing is seeming to stick when players are close to each other at the moment it's not very fluid at the moment is it uh, again for both sides um, it just needs to be if, if it's not on just keep possession keep building it and just be patient um, but again with Beeston still in possession they have another opportunity breaking down the whistle blows and Hampson and Westminster get that one. Good turnout today. Lovely to see people. You don't often see the, uh, well you can't from the camera position, the people up on the balcony. So it's a good day to be up on the balcony here at Notting Park Centre. Absolutely. The sun is it's shining. A, it's a nice day. And as you mentioned earlier, it's, it's very different to previous weeks. Here's Maddie Penwood with a restart. Immediately closed down. Space pass. Uh, things are opening up. It's good shielding of the space, although it has opened up on the right hand side of the circle. Goalkeeper goes down. It's still in play. The angle is closed. Sefter are coming out to meet a few moments ago and Beast and survive. I think Holly Hunt was uh, in prime position to find a layoff, but there was no one there. The space wasn't up there for the layoff. Absolutely, and I think it's uh, it's a really unfortunate turnover and the player on the ball, Sarah Robertson, it's not a player you want to give that time on the ball. Um, I think we were really lucky to escape that one, but really well defended from the girls. Bit of a coming together. Umpire is uh, signalling the free hit and also off camera pointing just exactly where it needs to go, so it'll be restarted from the back of defence. This is BTV. That progressive ball is often getting closed down from the first line of defence from Hampstead and Westminster. I think when you receive that ball in that position, you've got two options really if you're not looking to go backwards, uh, which has to be your first receipt has to take you somewhere. At the moment, as you mentioned, uh, the girls are just being closed down and are not given the opportunity to play that line ball. So it just needs to change the picture a little bit. At the moment, base of defence is defending space, which they're doing fairly well, but it's given outside of the 23 Hampstead and Westminster plenty of space to to play into when beast and retreat free hit is this a chance to get the ball into the circle at pace at the moment no it's been worked outside and beast and kind to uh, creep out their shell a little bit this might make the space for an angle for Hampstead and Westminster to exploit but at the moment they're happy to maintain possession just inside halfway is there an angle ball on here been mopped up and well watched it's a chess game this one yeah and I can't quite see who that was but again really well stepped just in a really good position to, to mop up that pass but um, again good patience by Hampstead uh, looking to kind of work that ball into the D but just got to choose the right time to deliver that longer ball risky ball and it just about pays off I thought that ball was rolling in front of the goalkeeper a couple of players in blue and white sniffing around for that opportunity. There's a hopeful ball which is just beyond the player on the far side. Possession turned over via the side. It seems that both teams at the moment are more than happy to allow that transfer, allow that possession in the deep 25 and just kind of almost wait for that turnover. Based and promising with a only shot on target in the game so far but at the moment I think Hampson and Westminster are, are edging it uh, pendulum is swinging their way 
Still no goals. It's an aerial ball out of defence. That's a different look. That's taken down nicely by Robinson. Uh, looks to go quickly in towards the circle. Knew it. Earns a long corner. Robinson wants that ball quickly. You can see looking to take it as quickly as possible. Support is coming up. There's a few black shirts off camera. Uh, they've possessed and he's given away though. And the break is on for Hampstead of Westminster. You can see the Beeston defence looking to get back as quickly as they can, but now Hampstead of Westminster just hang on to it, and maintain from those, possession. From those set positions, you've just got to really make sure that you maintain possession and you can string something together going forward. To turn the ball over there on the 25 has, as you say, just allowed Hampstead to kind of get back into that game, build that spell of possession, and uh, the Bees again just trying to fight to win that ball back. Once again, there's an awful lot of players in shot on the far side of the field. Umpire's arm pointing the direction for the goal. Hampstead and Westminster are targeting. 15 minutes completed. Everyone's stopping. Looked like that was going to be played in on the reverse, but no one was falling for that. A little run to the left-hand side. Nice idea. You could see it coming off. But the pace wasn't there. It's very good pressure there by Mads Neuert, I believe. Um, just to kind of get that player's head down and make her play that pass a little bit earlier. You can see in shot is Lauren Turner, number 17 for Hampton and Westminster. The joint top scorer, seven for the season so far. Definitely a player we don't want to have that ball in the circle. Robinson, I think that is on the far side scrambling doing everything she can to get the ball back she's taken the sting out of that possession from Hampstead and Westminster and driven them all the way back again really determined player again when Hampstead are in possession there Sophie just offers you that something a little bit different really applying that pressure to the ball whistle blows Really good win there by Martha Lawrence. Into the circle on the left-hand side, scrambling defence, and that's the first penalty corner of the game. That's just come there, I think, because of, a again, a sloppy turnover. But just you see Martha win the ball here. Again, we just need to make connections there. Chooses to dribble out and then just going to ground in the D and... It's just a really unfortunate corner. When you're coaching players in those situations, would it be stay on your feet is the, is the mantra there? Absolutely, yeah. You just want to push them into areas where you're almost comfortable with the shot happening. Um, anywhere along the baseline there, if you can just encourage them to keep carrying there. And again, we look to then defend in pairs. But uh, yeah, really unfortunate there, whether she's meant to go onto the ground or just slipped, but just something you need to really be aware of. Empire making sure everyone is on the line. I think there's a ball rejected over there for the injection. So we've well a little moment before we get uh, get underway. Teams are ready. Played in low and swept away from harm's way. That one wasn't to script for Hampstead and Westminster, was it? Absolutely, and I think that was Martha Lawrence who's made that crucial interception there. Just really low, really good position. And also that was the final act of the first quarter. Beeston nil, Hampstead and Westminster nil. Plenty of action, plenty of uh, intrigue. Not much in the way of goalmouth opportunities, but it's still early. Two teams finding each other out early on. And I think we'll have a little pause for the two minute quarter time break. This is BTV.
Welcome back to BTV. First quarter is now in the history books. No goals. But Beeston with a shot on target. Hampstead and Westminster ending the quarter with a penalty corner routine that didn't quite come to fruition or wasn't as it was in the plan. So, second quarter is upon us. Conditions are still good. It looks like we are off and underway again. Aerial ball straight from the word go from Nadia Benalo. And a real clash. Thought the umpire may have blown for something there. However, nothing was in it. I think and it's a really good idea to, to throw that aerial early and really apply that pressure. It tells Hampstead what kind of game they're in and that the girls really do want this. But I just would like to see that ball go into the corner just to go off the sideline maybe and set the press. Maybe the, the, a slower ball into the corner will hold up uh, and also make everyone turn and run towards the ball as well. Beeston already facing that way. Here's something in the offing into the 23. Some decent run, but support isn't there. She's having to check back. Lauren Burrell, captain, and she's been penalised. Hampton of Westminster surviving that one. I think uh, they did very well, as you said, in the first quarter, putting the ball in the positions they're happy with the possession to be into, and by making Lauren Burrell run away from goal on the right hand side, blocking the route. Need to do. Absolutely, and I think it's just Hampstead dictating where they're quite happy play to be. That's a nice ball and a nice take, and things have opened up, and there's an attempt on goal. Steph Terrell's come out and used the boot. Not quite caught hold of that one, has she? I don't think so. No, I think uh, I was expecting to see the net ripple. The space opened up like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, she was really fortunate that she managed to pick the ball up there with, with no one around her. Uh, you'd just like to see that on target, really. It is a free hit. We're just pausing for an equipment check. Tiger shoelace, it used to be called these days. Uh, everything's a bit more technical. So this time, Hampstead Westminster look to get their passing together outside of the 23. There's an attempt to ball across the line, which comes off. That's dribbled all the way through. Beeston happy to watch that one and happy to do that all day long, I would suspect. I think that's really good defensive work from Beeston there. Just being patient, making sure they're staying with players and just waiting for that ball to come. So really good from Beeston. Look at the pressure from the restart. Hunting in packs. Trying to force a mistake. There's a slip there. Possession still contested. That's really good from Beeston there. Just both of the players there applying pressure to the ball, trying to force that turnover. It's really, really good. Crunch ball in has been mopped up. Now Kuzak not only picking the ball up, it's a free hit too. Ariel, that's been taken down by the visitors. Another whistle blow, very stop start. Sound of stick on stick in the middle of that. Yeah, a little bit late challenge, I think that was. Uh, again, from Alice Huddleston, but she's just always at the player on the ball, applying that pressure. Exactly what you want to see out your centre forward. Into the circle, and that's the second penalty corner of the game so far. It's the second for Hampstead and Westminster. Didn't look like it was. Uh, Anything was on, so second prize was win the free uh, was, was win the penalty corner. Yeah, and I'm not quite sure who that was on the Hampstead team. However, that's really good skill along that baseline. Just the little turn here, the little lift over the stick, and to win a short corner there, recognising that there's nothing really on. It's fantastic. So we saw a routine not quite go to plan at the end of the first quarter. We see something similar. Or something different this time. So far, uh, Lucy Hyams scored two penalty corners for the season, and Emily Douglas also on two. Trap is good, and that is the opening goal of the game. 
It looks like Fran Chu is uh, taking the uh, congratulations, I think. But we'll get that confirmed. It's what is true is that the visitors have taken the lead. Yeah, and it's a really simple short corner. That slap looks like it goes to Steph's bottom right, I believe. Um, yeah, it's just managed to squeeze its way through. So really unfortunate for the bees. Um, it's a, a correction, actually. Emily Douglas, it is with a goal. So that's the third of the season for her. Just seemed to be not necessarily the most power, but the, the direction and the shape on it was very good. And I think that's what, uh, that's what did it in the end. And that's the key bit for me. I think it just has to be something on target. And then as long as you've got those runners and those players following up on that second phase, uh, I think you give yourself a really good chance there. Visitors looking for their first victory since November the 13th. They're in the driving seat now. Not Beeston got in response to that. Certainly not going to help matters. Possession given away. Actually, some confusion about the return of the ball. It's a good turn over there by the girls. Whistle blows a couple of times just uh, off screen. You can see it's a hand sort of Westminster ball. It's just this constant turnover at the moment. I think both teams just want to get a little bit more of a grip on the game and just build some possession and start to kind of build play up the pitch. Alice Huddleston has already put a shift in in this game so far. Every time you see that ball being passed across the defensive line for the visitors, She's chasing it down. Exactly doing that as a play restarts again. That's nice. Attempted interception. Doesn't come off, but it does on the second attempt. As we've seen again and again and again, the defensive swarm when Beast are in possession into the circle played across the uh, on the reverse side but it rolls out and Hampstead Westminster will clear really good from Alice there just setting that press the team with her saying let's go this space is starting to open up briefly but Beeston are doing well at closing it down when the point of attack changes I think that's the thing absolutely and I think they've done really really well to pick up that ball there create not much on for Hampstead and again it's just then maintaining possession building something and really growing into this game but um Plenty of chances coming both ends. It's a professional performance so far. It's not been sparkling from either teams, either of the two teams. It's a really good win there. That's worked out nicely. Bell playing the ball to the top of the circle. Is this going to be kept in play? No, it isn't. Beast and ball from the side. This is the sort of position, though, you need to commit players for. Don't give the ball away cheaply. Summers will be restarting with that in mind. Possession turned over and then turned over again. And umpire signalling. Just for a moment, it looks like that Hampstead and Westminster had a clear run to goal. Just pushing numbers forward and being quite fortunate to win the ball in those key areas for them. But um, yeah, really, really well done by the bees there. Ball 
slipping over the sideline. Both teams, I think, clearly trying to play those longer balls and trying to find those leading forwards or higher midfield lines. Um, just not quite coming off yet for Hampstead. This be an opportunity for a long... I thought maybe an opportunity for a long aerial look to the right of me off camera. There's an awful lot of space to be found, but it's quite a lot of risk as well with that approach. Risk and reward. Absolutely, and I think um, the key part there is just need somebody offering that ball, just kind of leading into that pocket, uh, calling for that aerial maybe. Another Hampstead and Westminster sideline ball. Incremental progress down the side at the moment. Is there a second goal in the game before half-time? It's looking that Hampstead have got, obviously, a lot of possession at the moment. Um, to be honest, I think Beeston have probably had the better chances this quarter. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just kind of making something in the circle, really. Some more twisting and turning. Fired in towards the circle. Goalkeeper happy to watch that one. That's a great ball into the circle there from, I think it's Sarah Robertson. Ten years in international. Sarah Robertson, plenty of experience. As I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, in this uh, Hampson and Westminster side today, that's another turnover, but how sharply Hampson and Westminster in to try and win the ball back again. I think that's probably the edge. Two fairly even teams, as it appears at the moment. But the edge is just how quickly absolutely uh, back. And I think you can see there, uh, just in that earlier spell, that three players around the ball for Hampstead just wanted to really apply pressure to the ball carrier. Beeston did really well to get the ball out of that channel. But again, oh, uh, look at that nice uh, attempt at interception from Bell. High up the field of play. Another turnover here. Mads knew it. Just winning possession. Summer's looking to go for the restart. It's um, starting to open up a touch. We did have a whistle there on the 30 minutes, but I don't think that was a mistake. I think it was more to do with uh, getting the position of the restart right. Here's Summer's. You can see the acres of green to the left of the field of play, which can only tell you one thing. The rest of the players are to the right of the camera. And already there's an uh, attempt at an interception, sliding, putting everything into that. And it's very fortunate to still be in possession from Beeston. Just got to be really, really careful around the back. Um, it's a really good idea to get that ball out of congestion, play down the other channel, but just got to make sure that ball gets there. Just held up on the baseline, and that's well watched. And that, to my eyes, that looked fairly clean. Couldn't quite see what the foul was there. I'm the same as you, Andy. I, that looked fairly clean to me. Of course, uh, we're watching it from the camera. We're not right on the ground. And of course, the umpire's view is uh, way better than ours. Things starting to open up a touch as we approach half-time. Beeston quite happy now to sit back a little bit, I think. Soak up a little bit of pressure, maybe catch him on the break. Davison looking to play the ball into the corner of the field of play. There's a long blow on the whistle. It's going to be a free hit. Umpire Harvey pointing towards the car park end. Still... Been up. Uh, we're looking to upgrade to a penalty corner here. So, uh, so I'm not quite sure what that was for, Andy. I wonder if we can get the benefit of a. No, we can't get a replay at the moment. Um, we will try and clarify that during half time. We'll try and get some reasoning. Again, it's probably something that may have occurred 
off the ball because our focus is obviously with the, where the camera is pointing so it could be something off the ball we'll stand by for further instruction what is indisputable it's a third penalty corner of the game for Hampson and Westminster at the moment their conversion rate is 50% what does it move to now so the trap is good and that is a second hammered off the backboard and the visitors look to have taken charge just before half time yeah it's another similar corner for me um, just looking at that same bottom right to where Steph Tyrrell is standing the runners doing everything they can that take a slight deflection she was definitely I can't see what number it is but in a really really good position there whether that's thrown off Steph in goal a little bit but um, a really good delivery from the top of the circle so we'll get confirmation of that goal score as soon as we can at the moment we're not entirely clear on who it is but what that has done has really crystallised what the Beast and Halftime team talk would look like. Uh, what, do you, what do you reckon the, uh, the words are? I think it's going to be just to be really, really careful in and around our circle. Uh, as we saw, we're not quite sure what that corner was for, um, but it definitely wasn't for an offence inside the D, so to have something upgraded, uh, just potentially a little unnecessary, so just got to be careful in our own 25, but um, I'd definitely be saying to the girls that, look, we just got to regain control and start to build patterns of play. Lucy Hyams, you can see, uh, limping away from that ball, clearly uh, bumping into her on the foot. Never nice. Of course, the the real unpleasantness of that is you've given away a free hit with the ball hitting you. Can Beeston get towards the edge of the circle before the half is up? They've got one opportunity with 50 seconds or so left. At the moment, though, it's more backwards. Hampstead quite happy to sit off here a little bit. Again, more work, good work from Huddleston on the left-hand side. Is there a ball in the circle here? No. With half a minute to play on our clock, which isn't the match clock, of course. It's uh, looking like a 2-0 lead for the visitors. really starting to peter out from a Hampson and Westminster perspective although Beeston do have one more chance to sling the ball into the circle with time running out. That's really good pressure there from Keris Miller I think it was uh, just to be patient don't dive in, force the turnover and uh, yeah really really good. Long corner is that? Yes so not entirely sure where the time is coming from. We did have a few stoppages of course so our clock is different to the uh, to the match clock. In fact, looking at that as Grieve took possession of the ball on halfway, that is the half-time whistle. Beeston, I think, a little bit hard done by. They started well, but it's precision and uh, taking the chances when they're presented from Hampstead and Westminster, in my view. That's the difference, and that's why they're 2-0 up at half-time. What's your thoughts? Absolutely. From a neutral, I think, uh, you look at this game and you think it's, it's either teams for the taking. Uh, Beeston have definitely created a number of really good goal-scoring opportunities. And just unfortunate, it's those two corners. Uh, pretty decent routines there and just good deliveries. Um, so, yeah, I think it's anyone's game in the second half and Beeston are still within this. There is a possibility of a, a good comeback on the cards in the second half from Beeston. They will have 10 minutes to get the instructions to the players. They know what they need to do. Can they do it? Can Hampstead and Westminster hold on or possibly extend their lead? There's only one way to find out. Stay with BTV. Any of the players on the ball is. There's definitely numbers around them. Attempted layoff. And that's a beast and free hit taken quickly into the circle. Is this a shot towards goal? It's been saved brilliantly and that's... Really, really good work in the defensive ranks from Hampstead and Westminster. Miriam Pritchard. That's a really good win there by Martha Lawrence. Into the circle on the left-hand side. Scrambling defence and that's the first penalty corner of the game. Goal on the right-hand side. Blocking the route. To do. Absolutely, and I think it's just Hampstead dictating where they're quite happy play to be. 
That's a nice ball and a nice take, and things have opened up, and there's an attempt on goal. Steph Terrell's come out and used the boot. Not quite caught hold of that one, has she? I don't think so. Exactly what you want to see out your centre forward. Into the circle, and that's the second penalty corner of the game so far. It's the second for Hampstead and Westminster. Didn't look like it was... Uh, scored two penalty corners for the season. And Emily Douglas also on two. Trap is good. And that is the opening goal of the game. It looks like Fran Chu is uh, taking the uh, congratulations, I think. But we'll get that confirmed. Penalty corner of the game for Hampstead and Westminster. At the moment, their conversion rate is 50%. What does it move to now? So the trap is good. And that is a second. Hammered off the backboard. And the visitors look to have taken. Thank you. 
Welcome back to BTV. Beeston were right out of the traps following their second half team talk, so we can tell that they're keen already. Let's turn it around. What's the advice to Hampton and Westminster for the second half? I think it's just keep obviously winning those upgrades, keep making the circle entries and just try and keep as much possession high up the pitch. With that in mind, a quick reminder of the position, Hampton and Westminster are two goals up against Beeston. They are, as you can see, in the white and blue, playing from left to right. This second half, playing towards the boulevard end. Beeston in black, black and yellow, from right to left, playing towards the car park end. And already that's inviting a little bit of pressure in the Beeston defence. We're expecting to see uh, a little bit of a shape difference this second half with more possession from Beeston. And already that's not quite gone to plan as Hampton and Westminster win the ball back on the 23. Beeston, though, can clear. Energetic start, but also similar pattern to the first half. Absolutely, and I think at half time the key message uh, from James will have been just start to build those patterns of play, get back to what they practice on a training ground, and just keep the ball for those longer periods. Um, it's looking really good in parts, it's just want to make that a little bit longer at the moment. A couple of good results recently for Beeston. Just looking at uh, their run recently, there was the draw at Surbiton, there was the win at Clifton Robinson's and also one goal defeat here against East Grinstead a couple of weeks ago. Good showing, but I think uh, their performance at the moment is being outmatched just a shade by the visitors. Absolutely, and I think Beeston are definitely a side that um, don't fear these big teams, uh, rightly so. Uh, they've earned the right to be in these this top group and it's just uh, just not quite seeing the beast that we know at the moment. That was a gift, giving possession away from the side. Could this be an aerial? Yes, it is. Shallow. Bounces, or is allowed to bounce. Again, as we've seen as a feature of the game, Huddleston really being a nuisance, trying to win the ball high up the field of play, and that's taken by Page G. It's a good interception by Page there. I think she took it on the glove. Hence why the Hampstead players might be complaining for the foot. Two goals in the first half for Hampstead and Westminster. Both coming from corners into the circle. They go for the first time. There's a ball across the face. And that's the first penalty corner of the game for Beeston. That's really good from Beeston there. That's the Beeston we know. Attack fast. Keep it fast. Flowing hockey. Short passes and just get ahead. Really, really nice. Talk us through the... Uh, the offence. It's really good there just to see that we're trying to get the ball out of congestion into the wider channel, attack down that right, some really good individual skill there, I can't quite see who it's by and to deliver the ball across and win that foot there. Really I think nice. it was, I, I think you're right, it is a foot on there but difficult to see exactly from the camera angle. So, what is in the Beeston locker? We've seen a couple of penalty corners converted from a number of players, so no more than uh, one per player. This out to the left-hand side of the circle. The trap is good, played in. Second time and deflected 
And it's underneath the goalkeeper play still. And it's a real re reward. Goalkeeper couldn't do much about that. She was trying to keep out of the way. But also, it's a tough one as a goalkeeper because you can't lie on the ball. You've got to be able to present the ball. But also, you need to defend the goal. Absolutely, and I think the keeper's reacting really well here. The corner's obviously not gone how Beeston have planned. It's that second phase, and uh, the Hampstead keeper's done really, really well to keep that out of the net. So two in quick succession. Quite a wide area. Played in and blocked on the second attempt. It's live. And the umpire clearly pointing. It's a Hampstead and Westminster ball. So did that come off a... Uh, a Beeston player in the middle of all of that? To me it looked like I think Lauren Borrells picked up that rebound and I think it was Lucy Millington just in front of the keeper. Uh, just may have hit her body in before going in the goal. Another Beeston free hit and, uh, and not wasting any time to get towards the edge of the circle but that may have been the wrong choice as Hampstead and Westminster with the ball at the end of the stick. And Holly Hunt tries to get the ball out of harm's way. Just a little bit too long on the ball for me there. I think it's Alice has done the right thing to try and take that early. Uh, just held it a little bit too long. Here's Maddie Pendle. Thought about the long aerial ball. Decided to go and play it back to Hannah Grieve. Grieve under a little bit of pressure done well to get the ball out to there. Here's Pendle again. Looks up. Let's find Ben Allard, who gets the free hit. And are we seeing. It's actually a ball to Hampstead and Westminster. Looking out the window here from the chapel, the umpire pointing in a different direction to the one we were anticipating to. The only thing I could think there that I might have been given for is potentially obstruction. I think the ball just rolling underneath Nadia a little bit there, just making it difficult to tackle. So, um, yeah, really unlucky there. Turnover high up the field. Pressure starting to build. I think the umpire's giving a bit of advantage here. Played out from harm's way. From Miriam Pritchard has been involved heavily in the last couple of minutes. I think Beeston are really beginning to grow into this game a lot more. It's exactly what you want to see from the girls coming out into the second half. Uh, large spells of possession in the attacking half here. Grabbed at the second attempt. Nice ball into space. Finds Pendle. Pendle checks inside. Is there a layoff? Is there a pass? It is gone forward. And that spell of promising possession comes to an end. It's a really good carry there from Pendle, cutting inside, kind of drawing the defender out. But he's just then got to connect with that next layer. Hopeful reach for the ball from Ella Kuzak. Nice first time ball. Pendle's had a really good spell these last couple of minutes. Been in the thick of the action on this near side. And that's unfortunate there, I think. Just a little turnover. The space starting to open up again. We're, we're hearing an awful lot of the whistle at the moment. It is still a very bitty game overall. Absolutely. I think it's very congested in the middle of the park at the moment. Um, just got to think, we've got to recognise how we've created this goal scoring opportunity, which is just get the ball out wide. take Burge taking the ball there that's really good pressure there from Ruby I think it is playing at left half uh, just to kind of really apply that pressure as the Hampstead player receives the ball in the corner give and go into the circle is there a layoff it's a reverse stick shot and the umpire signal long corner 
very quickly through and good use of the baseline as well. Really nice play by Hampstead there, just to kind of draw the defender, open up that space behind, play the quick one-two and ultimately have a shot on target. Again, using the baseline to good effect, trying to work away into the circle. And that spell of possession is over. Just uh, got a bit of trouble with the match balls at the moment. They're a little bit too close to the uh, field of play. And that's what this uh, little break's for. Just hit a call, the universal sign for get a bit nearer out of the fence. There's the trap. Taken very close to the sideline. It's appeal. Beeston get the whistle. That's a nice skill there by Pendle, just to draw the foul. She recognised she was under a little bit of pressure there, so just to kind of play for that obstruction, really nice. Attempted aerial doesn't come off, and it's been picked up by Melanie Wilkinson. Just want to see them kind of get out of that channel there, try to play through the midfield and open up to the other side, really. And the umpire again points to the goal. It's a penalty corner. Let's have a look at that on the replay. It was a nice uh, surging run. And that's come just from an unnecessary turnover again. It's just really good spell of play by Beeston to win the ball back. Really nice bit of skill. And then just to turn the ball over and allow Hampstead to kind of get the ball in flow and enter the circle. Penalty corner number four. Penalty corner routine number four for Hampstead and Westminster. They've already converted two of them. Be interested to see this time. Will they go to the other castle? Will they try something slightly different? How will Beast and defend it as well? They're out straight away. The trap is good. It's played in. It's deflected. And that's been brilliantly stopped. However, play had already been stopped through the umpire's whistle, player down, clock stopped. Um, I wonder if we can see that back again, because uh, I think, first of all, draw attention to the saves, how quickly Steph Terrell was down. Of course, the play was stopped, but she wasn't to know that exactly. Uh, she start, probably started diving. Look at that, so close to being turned in. Is that Burge as well? It, I think it is, who was quite on hand. Player down. Off camera is now up and everything is restarted, but uh, close to a third from a penalty corner. Absolutely, and I think it was a very similar routine that we've seen before, so really well done by the Beeston girls to kind of recognise um, where they are looking to play that ball for the deflection. Um, and again, credit to Steph, what a fantastic save. Indeed. Ultimately, it wasn't required, but you've got to react, you've got to be sharp, and to stop the ball from less than a stick's distance away from the goal line. That's astonishing. Cam and that's brilliant from Steph, really. Uh, it's just recognising that that's the kind of player she is. Uh, Into the circle, opportunity, and that's a penalty corner for Beeston. And goalkeeper Pritchard immediately having a word with the umpire. She doesn't feel that uh, time is off, actually. Whilst you're watching the replay, I'll have a look at the window. If you want to talk us through the, the screen, I'll have a quick look at what's going on. Yeah, really good carry there. I think it's from Lauren Burrell on the ball. Again, just looking to deliver that ball into circle. I think it looks like, I think it's because Miriam, the Hampstead keeper, is on top of the ball. Obviously not playable. Um, and yeah, again, really good delivery from the girls. That's uh, a couple times now we've looked to get the ball across goal. And we've just been the first ones to it, which is really good. So, PC number three. That's my uh, tally increases by one not uh, too bad routines we've seen so far let's see if this can work Marion Pritchard in the visiting goal it's played in low it's turned towards goal the umpire has to get out of the way long corner again good defensive work from the visiting team as a unit 
Yeah, and it's a really good routine there. I know the girls practice um, their routines a lot. Um, it's really something they take the time to get right. Um, and it's a really, really good delivery from the top of the circle. Just a really good save from the Hampstead keeper. Nice into the circle. Kicked away by Pritchard again, who's uh, had not much to do during the course of the game. But when called upon, she's been equal to it. And that's what you need, really. You'd, you'd hope that your keeper is as quiet as possible uh, in the game. It doesn't have much to do. However, exactly like you say, when they're to be called upon, that they are 100% keeping that out the back of the net. Big call of play. Not uh, yet seen a card in the game, although that was a was a bit of a breakdown, or certainly a, an obstruction of sorts. Yeah, I think the Hampstead player there wasn't particularly happy. Um, just I think she felt it was maybe a deliberate breakdown, but yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. Play over the far side of the field. Reminder that three-quarter time will be coming up when that clock gets to 52 and a half minutes. It only takes a moment or two to score a goal. So Beeston's still in this. The longer it goes, 2-0. With Beeston in possession, you'd think they'll, they'll get more confidence from that, find at least a goal back. But at the moment, it is the visitors who are in the circle. Well watched and well defended, and that's an important touch. A free hit for the defensive. Defensive free hit for Beeston. So yes, very, very well watched and good timing because you don't want to miss time that you're at the risk of giving away a penalty corner. Absolutely, and I think that's what the girls have potentially been a little bit guilty of in the first half. But um, they've come out, they've recognised that, it's part of their game plan and uh, they're just making sure that it's... That's another good stave from Tyrrell. It's still live. I thought I heard a whistle in the middle of that. But yes, Tyrrell, right place, right time to block a third for Hampstead of Westminster. Yeah, again, really good pressure from the girls, making sure that shot was difficult to take. Long shadows on the playing surface at Nottingham Hockey Centre. Sun shining brightly. You can hear possibly being picked up by the microphones, the instructions being bellowed out to the teams, keep it moving. Number 21 nearest to your picture, Phoebe Willars. deeper at this moment in the game. Towards the baseline, played in towards goal. It's a bit of a slide. Is the ball still live? Yes, it is. Really well covered there by Steph in goal, just to make sure it doesn't go across. Player down on the 23 at the moment. I think it might be Bell, who's... Uh, Going off as a right. precaution. Not too sure what happened off the ball there. Good pressure on the beast in defence, but at the moment, Jenna is uh, equal to that. A bit way through. Ball is across the width of the field. The visitors look to build near side looking at it that's really Chris nice Lawrence did very well really nice defensive work there pressure's really starting to turn up earlier on I felt that there was not much between the two teams but at the moment it's Hampstead and Westminster have got uh, a couple more notches than just the edge at the moment 
Right. Yeah, I think it's the fact that um, Hampstead are just capitalising on a few of our mistakes at the moment. Uh, just do a few loose passes and putting that e extra bit of pressure to the ball, I think, is just forcing those errors. But, uh, as I say that, really, really good spell of play here. Just unfortunate not to keep it in the pitch. With 18 and a half minutes left to play, there's, uh, it wouldn't be sensible for a completely radical change of direction from Beeston. No, absolutely. I think Beeston just have to continue with their game plan. When they, they've they shown spells of when they get it right that it's working. Uh, and Hampstead are really struggling to keep with them on that. So it's just it's extending those periods of play and just doing it for longer. Towards the baseline again, trying to make a, a way around. Umpire is given the advantage, turning. It's another good save from Tyrrell, and that's being turned in for number three. That's a really good bit from Hampstead of skill down the baseline there. Just a couple lifts over the couple sticks. Uh, Beeston players not quite staying with her, and I'm not quite sure who it is. We see these lifts here. The player finds herself. I think it was might be Esme. Burge, I believe, just finds herself free in the D. It might be Robinson, uh, Robertson even. But we'll, we'll, that is a good time to score as ever at the end of the quarter. We'll get confirmation of the goal score as soon as we're able to. But it's um, that three-quarter time team talk has definitely changed again. We were saying more of the same. Now it's almost uh, what can Beeston do to get on the score sheet, reduce the arrears. Absolutely, I think Beeston just have to go back to how they started this half. Uh, I think they had really good spells, they were building play and looked in control. They just have to get back to that for me. So we'll take a breather as the players do the same. This is a two minute quarter time break. 17 and a half minutes left to play. Will it be three points for the visitors or can Beeston make a comeback for all time? Find out on BTV. Welcome back to BTV. The position is clear on the screen at three-quarter time. It is 3-0 uh, that Hampstead and Westminster are ahead, as you can see in the bottom of your screen. And it is the visitors to start the final quarter. As I mentioned uh, during the game, it's a win against Swansea on November the 13th, the last time that Hampstead and Westminster picked up three points and of course uh, points are vital for looking to get to the top of the table this will put them on to 31 which is level just breaking off as uh, the real tussle that's a penalty corner early in the final quarter for the visitors I think it's Maddie Pendle there just being caught on the ground there, looks like she's making the tackle on her knees, so potentially played into the body. Nice movement. It's easy to, and you can look at the frustration. So it's not going to change anybody's mind though. Absolutely, she appears adamant. It did not touch her, but um, unfortunately we're at the discretion of the umpires, so uh, we just have to play what we see. You can see some advice being given out. The team, Beeston, are still questioning that award. But uh, as much as the questioning will continue, 
it's not going to change anyone's mind. I can assure you from uh, from experience, uh, I think I'm well known uh, within the Umpires Guild as a player, and uh, it does not help. I'll make that seven around the edge of the circle. Already success twice from a penalty corner routine. And that's been taken on the baseline, but carried over. Very similar routine again. Uh, Hampstead almost reluctant to change routines. Here's an opportunity. Things have really opened up here. It's a one-on-one, -on -one and it's been played wide of the upright. So, so presentable. You just like to see Alice hold that ball a little bit more. You can see Miriam's running out her to charge her down. And it's just get your stick on the ball, be patient, and just take it round her. But um, yeah, really unlucky. It was almost she had too much time. I know you, sometimes if you get that snap moment, there's only one thing you can do, and you do it. When you've got, admittedly, obviously racing towards goal and the goalkeeper coming towards you, you've got a little bit more time to think about what you're going to do. Absolutely, and I think uh, I think there's not many players uh, in this league who would do different uh, in those circumstances. And again, especially when you're 3-0 down, you're just hungry for a goal. That's all you want. That would have really changed the complexion for the final 15. But it does show that there is a way through the Hampstead and Westminster defence, and Beeson have found it. It really looks like they've put a spring in their step as Alakusak takes the ball to the left-hand corner. Checks inside. Is that a free hit? Yes, it is. Support coming up. We're beginning to see, I think, this the Beeston team that we saw at the beginning of the first half. Uh, again, really, really coming out hungry to kind of get back on the score sheet. Pendle. It's been a bit of a change of shape as well as uh, more defenders have come forward to support. There's an attempted ball in which has been blocked well with a stick. Layoff. Can Hampson and Westminster get out of this? No, they can't. This is the first real sustained spell of possession that Beeston have put together for, uh, for a good while. And a transfer across the field of play. This is almost like a different side. It bounces a couple of times. Is there an opportunity for a shot on the reverse? Yes, it is. It's in for a Beeston goal and celebrations from Alex Huddleston. Beeston on the score sheet. That's a really good goal. Again, Alice is the first one to it. Just that injection of speed. Take it away from the Hampstead players and get that shot off. It's a brilliant goal. Just talk us through it. So I think how it's all started is just we're trying to get the ball out of congestion. Uh, it was really good. Played to the other channel. Again, the ball fed to the top of the circle with, with a waiting Alice. Carries the ball into space. She loves a backhand. And really, really good delivery. I think her performance today has definitely been... Uh well, deserve that goal. Absolutely. She works hard. She wants the ball. And it's really nice to see her getting the rewards for that hard work. So, the Hampstead and Westminster defence has been breached for the first time. Are there more goals in this? 14 minutes to play. As I've mentioned earlier on, anything does happen on BTV. We've seen some uh, crazy endings to games in times gone by. I am not sure... I'm not trying to oversell what's going on. I'm not sure we're going to see another two goals for Beeston in this, but they haven't been three goals worse off than uh, worse than Hampstead in this game. I think uh, two, maybe one, could be a feel about right. Absolutely, and I think it's just the girls have got to get back to what they're doing well, which is recognising when they're in congestion, get the ball into pockets of space, and look to play those passes to those leading forwards who are clearly wanting the ball. Alice has done a great job there to offer for the ball, and if we continue to do that, I don't see why there couldn't be another couple of goals in this. Huddleston as well did very well to avoid two challenges on the edge of the circle to continue the run. Let's break off as uh, a real spring in the step. Lombrell plays the ball. It's broken down. Robinson looking to go through directly. That's unlucky from Sophie there. Yeah, she's a little bit disappointed with the outcome of that one. Really good pressure. Just got to make sure you go for the ball. Just don't connect with the stick there. Important touch from Miller blocking the ball down the line at the expense of a long corner. Sorry, oh, sideline ball, what am I talking about? Yeah. 
you can just see now Beeston. Alice trying to cut the pitch there, just trying to dictate play, stop that ball coming back round. It shows that Beeston are well up for this, believing, gets something from it. Another turnover high up the field of plays, the ball going into the circle, it finds a foot outside the circle. Huddleston involved again, moving things quickly. Hammered into the circle high and dangerously. That's uh, a disappointing way for that spell to end. Yeah, it's a really good idea, and I can see what the girls are trying to do there to get that ball into the circle, as again, that's where you get your reward. But um, yeah, just got to make sure. Time off, and I think, are we seeing a... Uh, we're seeing a stoppage of uh, some sort. Um, not entirely sure why, but play's uh, now restarted. Usually when you see a, a whistle blown like that, my eyes go to the other end. Have, uh, as you can see in the picture now, have Beast and take over people. No, is they, uh, it's a bit early for that sort of thing, and that's quite a tough challenge. It was, uh, that's uh, umpire down. Umpire down. What's happened there? It's the, she just tripped over. I think it was just a slip. I'm um, just checking that. Uh, that seemed like a nasty tumble. She may be a little bit winded. Yeah, we will uh, break off for a moment or two with a score: Beeston one, Hampstead and Westminster three. 58-57 on the clock. Alice Huddleston on 55 on target for Beeston. And uh, earlier in the game, Emily Douglas from penalty corners on 22 and 33. Sarah Robertson from open play converting from close range that is the position we look like just looking out of the window away from the camera uh, everything seems to be okay to continue the umpires just having a bit of a conflad um, just checking that the equipment is still working because if you fall over on your back like that that's where your radio is sighted as well so just checking the communications are okay yeah absolutely and uh, maybe just giving herself that second to it kind of just recover almost. Um, yeah, very strange. Can't say I've seen this happen very often in many hockey games. Certainly you won't make the highlight reel for obvious reasons, but it was an unusual uh, occurrence, and obviously we're making sure that everything's all right because um, you know, I think it's the technical thing, I think, at the moment. Umpires have uh, conferred, and all is good. Eleven minutes to go. Are oh, them all goals in this one? And it's a hopeful ball down the middle, which has been mopped up at the first attempt. Okay, it's starting to get more congested as we saw in the first quarter, really, with no one allowed any sort of time to get on the ball. Well, that's you can see how that ball has relieved the pressure, but also how few players there are in that camera shot as we pan towards the left. Absolutely, it appears that everybody's just come back to the ball. Um, and again, Beeston trying to offer for the ball, offer for those short passes, but it just brings players with you and it just adds to that congestion. Miller closest to it, she's been bypassed. Attempted ball through the middle and that's good. Just taking a moment to get onto the stick, support is coming. Ball across the face and that's been turned in for number four for Hampstead and Westminster. It looked like a simple finish. And I think that's a second for Robertson. We will check on the replay, but uh, this seemed to be almost casual attack from Hampstead and Westminster. Look at that, picking the ball up in a huge amount of space. Support coming up in front of the goal and then takes a bounce, I think, just in front of the goalkeeper. And that's the fourth, and that would, you would have to think is three points in the bag for Hampstead and Westminster. Absolutely, I think, uh, again, we said this earlier, that it's a player that you can't allow that space in the D. Um, she's a well-renowned striker and has scored plenty of goals, so it's, it's just recognising the areas and the players that we can't afford to give the ball to. Knew it, looking to go for the restart. This time, though, the ball's gone to the left of the circle. Umpire whistling long corner 
is the sweep of the hand. I was expecting maybe a point towards the goal in the penalty corner, but not to be. Yeah, that's unfortunate there. I saw the player go to ground, and I think they were really unlucky not to win the corner there. Here's Ruby a pull up. Beast are moving about neatly. Unfortunate timing, I think. This is the best time they've had in possession of the ball with multiple passes going to the right players. That's a penalty corner. Clear signal. And I think that's uh, Bell who was in the corner working hard for Beeston. I think, yeah, really, really good skill there. And it might have actually been, we can see here. Uh, again, really good spell of play. Plays the ball to the corner. Really good lead out. And it might be, I think that's actually Imi O'Neill. So, yeah, really, really good skill there. Outside the D to have drawn that foul. Again, upgrade from outside the circle. But, um, yeah, really good for her. Um, and hopefully the girls can put this away. To yeah. So I make this penalty corner number four. And it's a too quick movement for the umpire's liking. So we'll go again. So time to take a, another assessment. Too quick movement. So it's one fewer in the defensive wall for Hampson and Westminster. Could this be? Could this be number two for Beeston? This is the trap. It's good. It's slow. It's low and rolling. And it has been turned in for number two for Beeston. Celebrations abound. And I couldn't quite see who got that, but from the celebrations, I would say that Paige Gillett um, got that crucial touch there. Really, really good to jump in front of the defender and just lift it over their stick into the bottom corner. Talk us through it. So again, really, really good. It looks like Hannah's just waited on the ball to see where Paige is. Can she get in front of the defender? And just picked out a beautiful pass. Uh, Paige has done the right thing. Don't take any pace off the ball. Just give it a little lift. And uh, really well done. So we are seeing what could be a grandstand finish here. We've got seven minutes, or slightly less than seven minutes remaining. We've seen six goals so far. Back to two is the difference. Beeston just beginning to kind of increase their spell of possession here. Um, and of course, as I mentioned that, the ball gets turned over. However, um, O'Neill again does very well to intercept. Yeah, Beeston just beginning to play with a little bit of energy now uh, and just really show what they're all about. Here's a hopeful ball forward into the circle. Play on, across the face of goal and that's been turned in. Is that the way the post? Chaos in front of the goal. Umpire right on top of it. Penalty corner. I think that's the closest I've ever seen an umpire award a penalty corner. Right underneath the crossbar. Ha, let's if we can see that again because this was hopeful. It bounced a couple of times. The ball went into the circle. Umpire playing advantage. And did that hit the post? It did it from Martha did. Lawrence. Is it, but again, who's that come from? You can see Alice celebrating there, thinking she's just managed to creep it under the keeper. But again, that's just come from a great piece of skill from Alice along the baseline. Uh, it's what she does. It's what she's renowned for. And Martha's just been really unlucky at the back post. I would have loved to have seen her score. This is a transformational performance compared to the previous three quarters. There's the trap again. It's drawn, turned towards goal. It's been blocked. It's another beast and ball. Umpires playing advantage, it's another penalty corner. This, with five minutes to go, this is the sort of performance that you would have possibly liked to have seen an hour ago. Absolutely, and I think we've seen spells of it throughout the game, but it's uh, just this sustained period of time now that we're, we're playing like this. And uh, yeah, exactly like you say, if we could have done this in the first half, oh, what a game this could have been. We're live. Another re-award there. I think it might have caught the foot of one of the runners. So in that case, then I'll make that five beast and penalty corners in this quarter alone. Be really interesting to see here what routine beast can go with. I know they have a few. Everyone ready, everyone prepared, everyone knows their roles. It's towards the left. It's swept in, and that's a disappointment. 
you could see clearly what the routine should have been but it didn't come off. Absolutely, and I think it was the right call. You can clearly see, I think it was the injector, Summers, uh, Lottie just in a lot of space there. Um, but just not quite where she wanted the ball. If this game were to continue for another 20 minutes, I think it, it's in the, in the balance. And as we're looking at it now, there's four minutes left. It's still looking like Hampstead and Westminster will come away with the points. But Mason have really... Tran uh, transform things in the in the fourth quarter. Absolutely, I think Beeston have to go into their next game with confidence. Here's Newitt intercepting the ball. Where is the support? She's making her way to the baseline, looking to find a foot. That's not what came off. Lawrence, big calls of off the foot, and it is a visitor's free hit. Three minutes to play. This game has had pretty much everything. Have you found your first experience on BTV? It's been brilliant. Um, obviously, the girls have, have played really, really well today. Uh, and there's, there's definitely been plenty to talk about. Look at this movement. And that's a tiny bit of miscontrol. The ball's still live and it's just now rolled out of play. You wouldn't have expected to see that. That type of uh, control. That's uh, Holly Hunt right in front of goal. Absolutely, and uh, with her just being fresh off the plane from Argentina, um, it, she's had plenty of hockey practice, but again, maybe it's that fatigue setting in. They've been asked a lot of hockey in a very few days. Uh, played uh, in Argentina, as you said, scored her first uh, England goal in the second match, uh, which was uh, less than a week ago. Absolutely, and uh, it's really good to see these young players now going into the England system uh, with uh, Esme Burge here as well, another young player. Um, it's just really nice to see that there's some fresh blood into that team. It may be, it's certainly not the case that Hampton and Westminster have taken a foot off the gas, but it's almost as if this Beeston side have suddenly had an injection of belief. Uh, recently, there's a Beeston free hit from outside the circle, just uh, less than two minutes to play. Absolutely, I think Beeston just seem a little bit more re-energised and are just hungry to get those goals because they know what they can do. Another great moment from Huddleston taking the ball towards the circle, it's found a foot just outside. Bit of 3D skills, still the route to the circle is blocked and it's gone the way of the visitors. And that is probably that in terms of where well, the direction of the points are going today. Yeah, you can see what Nadia was trying to do there. It was a really nice bit of skill. Unfortunately, she couldn't quite win that upgrade. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just not quite coming off the beast in today. taking the ball from the restart seeing the clock down in possession this uh, would put Hampstead and Westminster onto 31 points up their goal difference to 12 positive Beeston remaining on 17 However, it isn't all over yet. Still time for another twist in this game. That said though, with the award of that free hit, that is the end of the game. Handshakes around. Both teams know they've been in the game, certainly today. Absolutely, and I think Beeston need to go into their next fixture um, with massive amounts of confidence. Hampstead are a very good side and to score two really good goals and create potentially more opportunities than Hampstead had, um, it just didn't quite go their way today but um, I think the girls can be really really proud of this performance. It wasn't a good day at the office in the first three quarters for Beeston but when it got round to the uh, got towards the final 17 and a half minutes it's almost a that decided to bully Hampstead and Westminster and it looked like it was paying off. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, th if they just started in that first quarter, it's really easy to say. But if we can just sustain four quarters of how we played in that final one, um, we're really within a chance here in, in any fixture uh, within that top group. 
Beeston's women next fixture away to Wimbledon and then back here on the 12th of March against Surbiton in the Premier Division. BTV returns tomorrow. We'll be back again. Beeston men will take on University of Exeter. That one is uh, also looking a promising game indeed. Beeston men doing very well a week ago or six days ago now. Can they continue their upturn in form and results? That's only one place to find out. BTV. It's a good day for Hampshire and Westminster on the road at Nottingham. Hockey set up. Decent performance, but it wasn't to be for the Bees. This is BTV. From goal on the right hand side, blocking the route. They don't really need to do. Absolutely, and I think it's just Hampstead dictating where they're quite happy play to be. That's a nice ball and a nice take, and things have opened up, and there's an attempt on goal. Steph Terrell's come out and used the boot. Not quite caught hold of that one, actually, I don't think so. Exactly what you want to see out your centre forward. Into the circle, and that's the second penalty corner of the game so far. It's the second for Hampstead and Westminster. Didn't look like it was... Uh, scored two penalty corners for the season. Emily Douglas also on two. Trap is good. And that is the opening goal of the game. It looks like Fran Chu is uh, taking the uh, congratulations, I think. But we'll get that confirmed. Penalty corner of the game for Hampson and Westminster. At the moment, their conversion rate is 50%. What does it move to now? So the trap is good. And that is a second. Hammered off the backboard. And the visitors look to have taken charge just before half. How will Beeston defend it as well? They're out straight away. The trap is good. It's played in. It's deflected. And that's been brilliantly stopped. However, play had already been stopped through the umpire's whistle. Player down. Clock stopped. Um, I wonder if we can see that back again. Because uh, I think towards the baseline again, trying to make a way around. Umpire is given the advantage. Turning. It's another good save from Tyrrell. And that's been turned in. For number three. That's a really good bit from Hampstead of skill down the baseline there. Just the have put together for, uh, for a good while. And a transfer across the field of play. This is almost like a different side. It bounces a couple of times. Is there an opportunity for a shot on the reverse? Yes, it is. It's in for a Beeston goal and celebrations from Alex Huddleston. Beeston on the score sheet. That's a really good shot. Been bypassed. Attempted ball through the middle, and that's good. Just taking a moment to get onto the stick. Support is coming. Ball across the face, and that's been turned in for number four for Hampstead and Westminster. It looked like a simple finish. Wall for Hampstead and Westminster. Could this be? Could this be number two for Beeston? This is the trap. It's good. It's slow. It's low and rolling, and it has been turned in for number two for Beeston. Celebrations abound. And I couldn't quite see who got that, but from the seller from goal on the line.